the Very latest nice. edition of Wisden is out, the Cricketers' Almanac, um, and joining us as always in the studio with all the talking points from the latest edition is the editor, Lawrence Booth. Good afternoon, Lawrence. Good afternoon. How many years is it for you now as editor? Mm, this is unlucky 13. So oh, we'll see wow. where it goes from there. A so baker's not, dozen. Baker, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like one of these, not like the sort of presidency or you know, there's so many <laughs> terms you can, you can go for as long as you like. Yes, it gets renewed or otherwise on an annual basis. So right. I'm, I know I'm doing next year's book beyond that. Who can oh, say? Right. right. The, th- the, the talking points are the same every year. Your, your top cricketers of the year, men and women, and, and also your top five cricketers of the year. So you can you can announce those to us. Yeah, the, the five cricketers of the year, just a little reminder to listeners, they can only be chosen once, and the emphasis is on the previous English summer, are uh, Harry Brook, Ashley Gardner, Usman Khawaja, Mitchell Stark, and Mark Wood. So mm. three Aussies, I'm afraid to say, boo yeah. this, et cetera, and two Englishmen um, sort of reflecting an Ashes summer, really. Yeah, it was a, it was a fantastic Ashes summer, wasn't it? it was so really exciting! Was. Yeah, it was. You know, it, it was up there with two thousand five, which was one of the first Ashes mm. series I covered, and probably up there with nineteen eighty one, where you know Beefy's Ashes. Um, once in a generation, probably you get a series that uh, kind of speaks to the average sports fan. You know, cricket mm. always always fighting for a bit of space and attention in this football mad country. But when a series like last summer comes along, you get the feeling that people, you know, the sports fan on the street is talking about cricket and that's how it felt last summer. Yeah. And I think we do have to thank Baz Bolt for that, don't we? To a certain extent. It excites people. It's it's headline grabbing. It is. I mean, you know, the, the touring teams this summer to England are West Indies and Sri Lanka. And in December... Last December, we we learned that the the tickets for the first test at Edgbaston against West Indies have been sold out. Now, that was a record record early date for a non Ashes test. And mm. I think that was a re- reaction, the public's reaction to watching the Baz Ballers who score at you know four and five and over, put bums on seats. Um, they're kind of responding to Ben Stokes, the captain's plea for entertaining cricket. He believes that the more entertaining and aggressive you are, the more successful you'll be, and mm. the more you'll connect with the public. So it's a, it's a sort of double whammy. And okay, they they just lost badly in India in England, but. Every every team is badly in India. <laughs> yeah. you know, they came from two 0 down against Australia. Don't forget, first team ever to do that. So they they've been fun to watch. Kawaja would be happy to be in that five. I think he was he didn't go in with any form, did he at all? And and had such an amazing summer. If you think back, yeah, that's right. He I mean, without his performance in the first test where he scored 141 and 65, mm. I think England probably won the Ashes. It's yeah. probably as simple as that. He got them over the line in that game, uh, and he became the wicket that England wanted to get. I mean, he batted for. He faced something like 1,250 balls. Yeah, just stayed uh, in, didn't I remember? He just, yeah, just he was thinking back now, just long days of him still in. Yeah, it's just... he turned on the TV, <laughs> so the radio, and Kawaja was batting. I mean, Mark Wood got him out in the third test at Henley, bowled him with a leg stump Yorker. That was the moment, really, England thought, hang mm. on, we, we could do something in this series. And that's the beauty of the Wisden Almanac, is that, that you go back to those long summer days, or you can go back, you, you pick any of them up for any any year, and you read the stories, and you're yeah. sort of back Invocative, there seeing it. That's, so that's the hope, yeah. yeah we, have, we have sort of quite long 50, 1500 word match reports of test matches so we hope in 20 years time someone wants to remember the 2023 ashes they can turn to that and it will be brought to life your top uh, leading cricketers men and women yeah so leading cricket in the world is given it's the whole calendar year and you can be chosen more than once so the Mm. leading male player was pat cummins the australian captain who i mean he won pretty well everything last year he won the world test championship finally retained the ashes and he won the world cup in india which you know everyone thought india were going to walk that tournament and he took 42 wickets, which was more than any seamer in Test cricket. And then the, the leading woman was, uh, for the first time, an English woman, Nat Siver Brunt, yeah. scored hundreds galore. Your top T20 cricketer in the world is is a woman, isn't it? First time, yeah. yeah. So this award's been going seven years and she is the first female winner. Hayley Matthews of the West Indies. Now she she was, now get this, she was player of the match in eight successive games. Wow. Uh, and the previous record, we, we, very wisdom, we, we look these things up. The previous record was four in a row, so she doubled the best previous yeah. streak. And she was she was not just scoring runs, but taking wickets, so she was a worthy winner. The uh, the editorial that you put together as editor is, uh, is always sort of, um, you know, important, and a lot of talking points stem from it. One of the things you've looked at this time is, is the share of revenues in uh, world cricket. And there is this sort of stranglehold amongst a, a, a handful of nations, and a lot of it doesn't really filter down, further down the food chain, does it? No, that's my argument, really. I mean, the, the International Cricket Council have this big pot of money which they get from hosting tournaments so on and broadcasting rights, and they divide it up, and last year they increased India's proportion. India's proportion went from about a quarter to, to nearly 40%. Now, India could argue that we gener- you know, that they generate 80% of the world's global revenue because of their sort of the huge audience they have back home, but... My argument is that, that that extra money that they got, which is about $230 million, 
would be better used uh, propping up some of the countries lower down the food chain mm. who for whom that would be riches that would keep them going west indies for example their share of that pie was um about four and a half percent and they desperately need the money now india 230 million does sound like a lot of money but for india it's not they sold the the two years ago they sold the the, the, the broadcasting and streaming rights for the ipl for six billion dollars mm. so 230 million for them isn't a lot for the west indies it would be life changing so my argument is that let's let's try and share things out a bit more. Let's not be blinded by the fact that India generates so much of the cash, partly because they've got a huge population. Yeah. Let's look at keeping the game healthy, and India will benefit from that too. The IPL is partly reliant on the quality of its overseas stars. Mm. If West Indians aren't playing cricket anymore, that's one chunk of players they can't choose from. So, you know, I'm trying to think of the, the overall good of the game, not just the richest constituents yeah. of it. Also, with some of the, the sort of minor test nations where we're getting a lot more oh, it's a bit unfair on New Zealand but where we're getting like two test series which is a great shame it, it always feels a, you know like you're being short changed when mm. it's just a two test series you, you, you have something quite innovative around that well, what, what were you saying well I was suggesting that the option be made available to the, the so called lesser test nations yeah. to play four day test matches mm. um, a lot of test matches most test matches don't go into a fifth day um, it's expensive to host test matches and if you if you if it was a four day test you could have for example three four day matches over a series that would add up to 12 days rather than two five day matches which adds up to 10 so there's only two more days but you might get an extra test and then you have you, you generate more interest in test cricket i think yeah. you know the, the dreaded two match series that finishes one all and leaves you feeling unfulfilled mm. you want a decider this might help with that so it's a pragmatic attempt to keep test cricket alive in countries that can't afford to host it yeah yeah, uh, Stuart Broad, uh, handsome yeah, on the cover, re retiring. The cover. Yeah. Uh, a beautiful piece written by Jonathan Lee for you in the front there. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Stuart was quite an easy... He, he was actually on the cover three years ago, but he was wearing a mask because it was the oh, COVID right, year, okay. so you could only yeah, see half yeah. his face. Uh, and, I mean, regardless of that, he, he was one of England's players of the summer. Of course, he announced his retirement towards the end of the fifth test against Australia at the Oval, and he finished off that game with the last two Australian wickets, over 600 test wickets, he, he sort of wheeled away into the oval sunshine. You know, you could not have scripted a better farewell. So this is a sort of celebration, not just of his summer, but also of his career. Yeah, fantastic. Um, the other thing was, we love the quirky stuff. One of the great joys of wisdom is some of those weird and wonderful stories that you collate from uh, <laughs> from the, the the world of cricket. Has anything any standouts this time, Lawrence? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you. Um, uh, batsman scores king pair in an ODI. <laughs> so King Pear obviously a pair is obviously out yeah. first ball yeah. uh, Pear is out twice for naught yeah. King Pear is out twice first ball for naught you think well, how does that happen in a one day international yeah. he was out in the normal game itself first ball then they had a super over Right. he goes in again the same bowler gets him out first ball oh, so he's wow. got two noughts in a one day international go down in history Romario Shepherds is, is his oh, name well, thank Indian. you for well, mentioning I shouldn't have named him I'm, sure, I'm sure he's thrilled <laughs> yeah. and you spotted Len Goodman get a mention yeah, Len Goodman getting a mention I didn't know if that was because of all the cricketers that have been on Strictly but yeah. there's a nice story about him taking a catch and uh, celebrating with his friend and then getting told the next day by his headmaster that he can't play right, again yeah. well yeah. he unfortunately Len died yeah. last year so yeah, he, yeah, we're always habits. looking at um, celebrities who died to see if they've got a cricket connection mm. because we like to stick them in our obituaries if so and Len was a keen cricketer. And yeah, though, Strictly obviously has a, a sort of yeah. a history with ramps cricketers. Ramps, and, uh, Goffey. Goffey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was tough Michael Vaughan on it? Tough. Anyway, yeah, Len, tough. Was, Len was yeah. a massive cricket fan. So there is an obituary. It's unexpected, but but a nice surprise, I hope. Yeah. Have yeah, you ever have you ever written a piece about, has anybody taken on why generally cricketers make quite good dancers? I mean, it's to go question. on and win it for two of them yeah, is pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah. I, I think footwork, if you're yeah. a batsman, oh, you should have yeah, good yeah, footwork yeah. getting down the pitch to spinners. Uh, Hand-eye coordination, does that does that come into it? Are you good? I, I mean, I don't know whether you. Yeah. You're right. I, I, I honestly don't know. They're quite athletic, and, and I think they're in, in Goffey's case. He obviously worked with us here for a long. Incredibly competitive, very competitive. Anything you watch them in that series just get better and better because hey, I'm going to nail this. I'm going to be yeah. really good. He, at he this. didn't want to lose, and ramp, ramps look good in sequins. So that yeah, helped he did. As well, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I'm disappointed. My uh, 24 v Goring. CC last season didn't, 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 didn't make it didn't, didn't make, make the edit I just, I just flicked through it I don't think it was in there there was so. a vicious debate at yeah. the, one of the proof sessions I remember and sure. we just thought no yeah. we can't, can't justify can't that, that. A, little, a little story for you and there won't be, we talked about it on the air the other day we just lost the great Joe Kinnear a football manager and, and player and I played in a, a Bunbury's game with Joe in Regent's Park and he took one of the most incredible catches I've ever seen it was David English God bless him had brought along some sort of 
Surrey 19 year old fast bowler and he came down at 150 <laughs> mile an hour and it was a decent batsman in got a top edge that was going to carry for six basically over the boundary but over the wicket keeper's head and suddenly Joe just appeared from nowhere this diving catch he was in his probably 60 then <laughs> incredible catch from Joe I mean I think you needed to be there Gat was playing there's yeah. plenty of famous people that would that would stand up that wow well, brilliant a catch it was so and maybe... I bet that gave him as much pleasure as any of his football oh, achievements yeah. Yeah. probably telling boring well, Everyone to death. He just that. threw it down. We all went over, ran over to him. He was going, go away, go away. He didn't, <laughs> didn't, didn't, want, didn't, any, want, didn't want any fun. We were in the bar after saying, that catch, Joe, saying, no, no. no. That every day of the week. Yeah, yeah. But that, you, get, you have that sting on your hand the next day and you don't yeah. mind it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I, know, it's, yeah. I know what that's from. That that is badge a of honour. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's out in many different guises. We're holding the little hardback copies yeah. now. It also comes out as a, as a paperback, doesn't That's it? That's right, yeah. So it's, it's actually published on Thursday. This is the sort of... PR round two days ahead. Mm. Yeah, you go to uh, the Bloomsbury website, any good bookshops, and um, yeah, do pick it up. And exactly. somebody definitely Lovely be buying gift. one. His friend of the show and your old mate Justin Morehouse. Yeah, Justin's got an Comedian amazing, who's got, amazing collection got a, of very wisdom. good collection. I think I asked you last year. Do do the, does the office have the complete set? It does have a complete set. It's under lock and key. Yeah. It's not a full set of originals. They're quite they're quite pricey. You right, know, you're yeah. talking six figures at least for a full set of originals. So the right. collectors are all scrabbling around for some of the rarer editions. It's quite a it's a kind of a subculture in itself. Oh, we yeah, can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good to see you, Lawrence. As always, good Andy. To see we're you. Sorry, I've missed you, Thanks. but I've got a copy for him. So <laughs> good man. Uh, and we'll catch up do with you. you sorry, do you play, Lawrence? Do you play? I do play. Uh, not very, you, not very often and not very fought? well. Whoever will have me. The Cricket Writers Club. Oh, very oh. nice. Yeah, but we always lose by 10 runs. We always play the overseas media when we go on tour. We always lose by 10 runs. It's very strange. Mm. Do the media play the same way as their teams do? Are they, are they kind of, you know, is there a lot We're of... much more cavalier. <laughs> <laughs> Basketball has nothing on us, I promise you. <laughs> so, yeah, the latest wisdom is out now, Lawrence. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. It's on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.